Hey guys, it's Sarah. Today is going to be a long one. So we're going to have a cup of coffee. <laughs> we're going to talk about the books that I read in March. The second half of the month, my husband ended up going out of town unexpectedly and he was gone for a couple of weeks and we just weren't planning on that. We knew he had about like maybe five days, but it got extended which meant a lot more reading time for me. So I kind of, my reading really blew up <laughs> at the end of the month. And I ended up reading 12 things total in the month. So whoops. And yeah, so we're going to talk about it today. So this is going to be a long one. However, I read 10 middle grade books and two adult books because middle grade March. <laughs> so majority of my reading was middle grade. But I did read two adult books. So if you do not like middle grade or you're not interested in the middle grade that I read, I'm going to do the adult books first. And then if you don't want to hear about the middle grade, you can peace out. Uh, but if you're interested in all of it, then grab a drink. We're going to be here for a little bit. Okay, so I will show you what I read. And then I'm going to tell you if I plan on keeping it on my shelves or not. That's something that you guys have been enjoying. And I do want to say, if I read any advanced copies, so official advanced reader copies, those are not things that I can resell legally. Um, so I either pass them on to friends or I put them in free little libraries. Usually I put them in free little libraries. So I kind of just set those aside for the next time I'm near one. Um, but the things that I can sell, and if they're in good selling condition, I've actually been selling them on Pango. I did start doing that earlier this month. So I wanted to share that with you guys because I know there's been a few times you guys have asked if I sell my books anywhere and I have started doing it. Usually I would just donate, but I'm getting to a point where I'm uh, donating a lot and kind of thinking, mm, maybe I should just start selling these. So I'm, I'm putting that out there. Um, I do have a Pango page, so I will leave a link down below if you guys are interested, if you're over there. Pango is an app where you can buy and sell used books. So it's literally, it's like eBay for books. It's only books. And yeah, so I'm going to start um, selling my stuff down there. So I will leave my profile link down below. You can actually follow me if you have a pro, if you have an account over there and I will end up in your feed just like, almost like Instagram. <laughs> so, or you can go straight to my page and just see what I have available for sale. So um, the good thing about that as well is that they don't, there's no time limits, so I can just put them up and they can just sit there until they sell, which is nice. Or, or I can drop the price if I need to. But um, yeah, so I started doing that. So if you guys are interested, I will leave that link down below. No pressure at all, believe me. Um, this is not sponsored either. <laughs> I know that Pango has sponsored a couple booktubers, not me. I just decided to start using it. So uh, yeah, so I wanted to put that out there as well. So anything that is in here that I am gonna be unhauling will most likely end up over there as well. Okay, the first adult book <laughs> that I read in the month was actually for book club and we read The Cage. This is by Bonnie Kessler. This is a book that I did get from the publisher. It's an advanced copy, so this will be going um, into my box to donate to a free little library. But this one is a mystery, I would say, more than anything. We are starting out in an office building in downtown Manhattan, and there are two women who are working in the building. It's late on a Sunday night, and they are there working. They both get into the same elevator, and they go down to the lobby, and by the time the door is open in the lobby, one of the women is dead. And um, so there's a whole lot of things happening because of that. <laughs> so you are following the police investigation on what happened in that elevator. And the surviving woman is very upfront. She's telling what happened. This is what happened. Here's what's going on. Uh, however, she starts really piecing things together herself as well because she wants to know what's going on. And so we're following her trying to figure out what's going on. Meanwhile, she's like in police custody because she's the suspect, obviously. <laughs> Why wouldn't she be? She was the only other one in the elevator. And then we're also following the CEO of this company because there are some things happening that could be contributing to this woman's death. And so we're getting that side of it as well. And we're also going back in time a little bit to see uh, this woman's when she started working at this company and how things have unfolded with that. And so you're kind of going through this whole process together. So there are there's two two timelines definitely with this. And 
Yeah, that's all I'm going to say. So you you kind of follow along and find out what's going on. I will say it wasn't something that I personally was like trying to piece together myself. I was just kind of listening to it. I did listen to this on audio. The narrators were Piper Goodeve and Chris Andrew Suya. I, oh, I don't know if I said his last name right or not. Um, but the narration was great for both of these characters. I really did like the narration for them. So, uh, yeah. And I ended up really enjoying it. Um, it wasn't completely mind-blowing, but I did like what was going on. And I liked the ending a lot. There was definitely a couple parts towards the end that I was like, ooh, interesting, <laughs> or what? So I said that out loud a couple times. Um, but yeah, I did really enjoy it. I ended up giving it four stars. And um, like I said, I'm not going to hang on to the um, ARC copy of this. So this will go in my uh, free little library box, but it was good. So um, it's something that is available now. It did come out in February. So if you guys are interested in reading this, you can get it. And the second adult book that I read was Find Me, and this is by Alifair Burke. This is another book that came out in January, so this is another newer release. Now, this has been said to be the next book in the Ellie Hatcher series. However, the author has come out and said, not really. Ellie Hatcher is a detective series that she has previously written, and Ellie does make an appearance in this book, and she is featured in here, but she's not the main character. She's kind of, she's more of like a side character comes in to help with the investigation type thing. So it's not really, it's not really about Ellie, if that makes any sense. Uh, but she is in here. So if you do read that series and you know Ellie's story, then you would definitely enjoy this because I believe there is something about Ellie's life that kind of ties up in this one, which was interesting. But you also don't have to have read the Ellie Hatcher series to appreciate this book because I have never read it. And it, I was fine. I understood what was going on. Enough was explained that I got it. Okay, so this one follows a woman named Hope, and Hope is basically living with amnesia. She doesn't remember anything before a car accident that she was in that left her on the side of the road, and she was found by another driver. And this driver and Hope ended up becoming best friends, and Hope pretty much restarted her life because she didn't have any memories before that car accident of her life at all. So uh, they become best friends and Hope is living as Hope now. And there is an incident that occurs in that surrounds Hope of a place that she was at where a man was murdered and Hope has disappeared. So we don't know where Hope is, don't know what's going on. Does it have something to do with her previous life? She doesn't know. Um, and so we're following her best friend trying to find her <laughs> and find out what's going on and see if she is alive. And yeah, and so we're learning things obviously along the way about Hope and her previous life and how these things are unfolding. Who is this man that was killed? How does he factor into everything? Uh, so you kind of follow like an investigation as far as that goes as well. And I did like this. I did give it four stars. I didn't love a romance that was in here. I didn't love that. I kind of felt like it felt a little bit forced and just kind of like, okay, but it wasn't even a main plot point. So why was he even in there? That type of thing. So I wish that the romantic relationship had been a different type of relationship, if that makes any sense. Um, but other than that, there were a couple of things that were a little bit convenient that kind of, oh, well, that's convenient. Oh, that just happens to be this thing and this thing and that person. And oh, interesting. So yeah, that's the only thing that I was like, mm, it's a little convenient. I wanted a little bit like, like maybe a longer book with a little bit more uh, difficulty, if you will, in solving this. So yeah, but I did give it four stars. I did really enjoy it. Um, this is another one that I listened to on audio. It's narrated by Kathleen Early, and she did a great job as well. Um, not something I'm going to hang on for the long run because I don't see myself rereading this book or like collecting Alifair Burke necessarily, but um, it was a good read and definitely worth it for sure. But yeah, so I read this one as well. Okay, so now we are going to get into the middle grade books that I read, and there are 10 of them. I'm telling you, I killed it. Um, so I 
did not pay attention to the challenges for middle grade March. I'm sure some of these books fit into those. It's just not something that I concentrated on. So I didn't track it or try to go back or figure it out or anything. So I'm not going to talk about the challenges, but I will talk about what I read. Okay, the first one that I started with was Walk Two Moons. This is by Sharon Creech. This is a book that was sent to me from Lindsay for our Christmas book exchange. So yay, I read one of my books off that cart. And I listened to the audiobook of this one and it was narrated by Hope Davis and it was really good. So this follows a young Native American girl and she is searching for her mother. And she gets into a car with her grandparents <laughs> and they go on this trip to try to figure out where her mother is. And during this trip, you are learning a lot about this young girl and her life and what she is dealing with. And then you're also learning a lot about her grandparents at the same time. And a lot of that is through storytelling. Definitely. Um, this young girl is telling stories to her grandparents about, you know, things like her friend and things like that. Um, but you can kind of tell, like, she's kind of telling a little bit of her own story here. And her grandparents in turn tell her stories as well. So um, this was really, really good. And the only thing that was a little bit jarring in the beginning is that you're really just kind of thrown into the car. You're going with them. <laughs> so there's not a whole lot of lead up to, um, you know, here's what's happening. We're taking this trip and blah, blah, blah. And we're getting ready to go and all these things. And let's get in the car. Like you're it, like you're immediately in the car with them. So it was a little bit jarring at first. I kind of had to get used to that. And I was like, okay, what's going on? But once I kind of like figured it out, I was completely in the entire way. And yeah, I really, really love this. I ended up giving it five stars. I did. It was fantastic. Um, I loved the ending. Loved the ending. Um, teared up a little bit too. I teared up a little bit. This non-crier teared up a little bit. I don't think a tear actually fell, but um, I definitely couldn't see very well. <laughs> <laughs> towards the end. So I'll say that for sure. But um, yeah, so loved it. I'm going to keep this for my shelves. It was great. Okay, the next one that I listened to is Towers Falling. This is by Jewel Parker Rhodes. And um, I wanted to read a 9-11 book that was geared towards middle grade. And I had a couple on my shelves that I could pick from. Um, I actually had three. <laughs> so I picked this one because this is the only one in audio that I could find. So I just, I wanted to go ahead and give it a listen. I, I listened to this in one day. Like it was really quick and easy to do. Uh, and so this follows a young girl. She's 10 and she is starting in a new school in New York City. So you see her dealing with that. That's always really hard, right? And she ends up making friends with a couple of other kids. And they all have their own struggles that they are dealing with as well as far as um, their backgrounds and their cultures. They're all different, which is great. Um, but you see how each of them is dealing differently with some things and having different backgrounds and things like that. So you're seeing all three of these kids uh, who are becoming friends and then what they are individually struggling with. Then they get an assignment in their class that they have to write a report about 9-11. And our young protagonist here has never, she doesn't know what 9-11 is. She doesn't know about the attacks. Um, again, she's 10 years old. This is set 15 years after 9-11 happened. So uh, she was not even born when 9-11 happened. And um, she doesn't have any knowledge of it. She has no idea what it was and that that even happened. So it was a big shock to her. Um, her father is also trying to shield her from that, from even knowing about it. He doesn't want her to know about 9-11 and what happened. So he's trying to keep her from, like, you know, watching any videos about it or seeing any footage or anything like that. He's trying to protect her. Uh, but she is determined to find out because she finds out, you know, that something like this happened and she wants to know all she can about it. Yeah. So it's, a, it's literally about her learning about what happened in 9-11 and she's questioning things and asking questions and what's going on and why did this happen and all these things. Okay. I liked the story. <laughs> um, I liked 
the kids learning about 9-11, I think, because that's important. It's part of our history. And we learn from past, right? Uh, here's what I didn't like about the book. Number one, I did not like the narration. The author narrated it, but <laughs> I felt like she yelled the book to me. Like, it felt like she was yelling the entire time. I just didn't like it at all. Um, if it had been a longer audiobook, I would not have listened to it. <laughs> but I was like, mm, four hours, I can handle that. It's fine. So, uh, yeah, so the narration, not so good. And then there was also a scene where she and her classmate, who are both 10 years old, were riding the subway in New York by themselves. And I had a hard time with that. I know I'm not from New York. I'm not from the city. I'm sure there are kids on the subway by themselves all the time. It was just hard for me to be like, I cannot imagine my 10 year old being on a subway by herself. She would not be able to get around. So, um, yeah, but again, that that's me never living in a big city like that. <laughs> like I'm just now living somewhere where there even is a subway system that I can get on. But, um, so I know that a couple of those things are things that like, just because it's not the way either I would react or I've seen a child react or um, doesn't mean it's not true or real. I get that. I get it. Believe me. But it did kind of affect my reading experience. So like, I can't deny that either. So I don't know. I gave it three stars. Um, it was fine. I'm not going to hang on to this. I am going to um, unhaul this one. But yeah, so it was fine. And the next one is The Land of Stories series by Chris Colfer. I read A Grim Morning, which is book number three. And I did have this one featured in my middle grade series in the Spotlight vlog. And this one, again, is book three. So I'm not going to go into like super detail about it, obviously. But um, this one, we are back in the Land of Stories with our twins. And uh, there is a wartime situation happening. So that was really interesting. Uh, and it has to do with like, kind of revolutionary time as well. So like that was really cool. It's a really cool tie-in with that. And so you kind of see how that all works together. There is a dragon in it as well, which was really cool. And yeah, just full of adventure and um, all sorts of fun stuff. Now, this is another one <laughs> that had 14-year-olds traveling across Europe on a train like it ain't no thing. And I'm I have a 14 year old. So I like, it was just kind of funny how I had two books in a row that were like, I have a kid this age, she would not be able to do that. <laughs> like I have a kid this age, she would not be able to get across Europe on a train unaccompanied at all. Like there's no way. So I definitely have to suspend my belief <laughs> for sure. Well, this one, obviously it's a fantasy, but I still had to suspend my belief a little bit because, you know, part of it is set in contemporary times. So it's just like, okay, maybe I should teach my children how to travel better. I don't know. So <laughs> I don't know why I had such a hard time with that this month, but I did. It's just kind of funny. So, um, but I did get this one four stars. I really did enjoy it. It was a great continuation in the series and I'm definitely excited to read book four soon, hopefully. Like, I'm thinking I might pick it up soon, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. And this one is definitely staying on my shelf. It's going back on my daughter's shelf because I'm totally rating hers. This, these are her books, so. <laughs> <laughs> she has taken them. They are her, they are hers, but um, yeah, so I'll put this back on her shelf and then steal the fourth one. Okay, and then I picked up my favorite read of the month, and that is Sweep by Jonathan Oxier. This one is another book that was sent to me for Christmas Book Exchange. Amanda sent me this one. It's one of her favorite middle grade books, and I know that Krista absolutely loves this one as well, and now so do I. I loved this book. <laughs> this is a historical book that is set in the 1800s in London. We are following a young girl who is a chimney sweep. That's what she does by trade. She is very young. I think we start out and she's like 11. And she is living in this, I don't want to call it an orphanage, but like a group home, if you will. And all of the kids who live in this home are orphaned, basically, and they are all chimney sweeps. So they work for a man who shelters them, gives them kind of food, <laughs> um, gives them a place to sleep. And then during the day, they work jobs for him and he takes their pay. Um, but they have food and shelter, so that's what they do and they're really good at what they do. Now, the reason it's children is because they're small and they can fit up these chimneys. 
However, oh man, I, okay. So I didn't realize how dangerous of a job this was. I mean, I was getting like, my heart was racing at certain points when she was up in the chimneys, like doing these things and explaining how dangerous it is. Oh my gosh, I can't even imagine. But she also is given a chance to escape and to get away from people who are meaning to do harm to her. So she takes that chance and she ends up having almost like a little bit of a guardian in this little lump of coal that was given to her years ago. And um, it turns into this ash monster, basically, like ash monster. So this is a little bit of a fantasy as well. So there's, that's something as well. So this is like a historical fantasy, if you will. And I love, I love that. I love that aspect of it. So you follow her from there as well, like trying to survive because <laughs> the girl's got to survive, right? She doesn't have food and shelter anymore from this man who was actually very dangerous. Um, and so you follow these two as they navigate everything and try to live and what they go through and everything. And it was so beautiful. You guys, it was beautiful. Just the companionship and the friendship in these two is amazing. And I just absolutely, absolutely loved this. I just, I was reading it and I just never wanted to put it down. And I cried. You guys, I cried in this book. Non-crier, but I like tears actually fell in this one. I cried. Uh, yeah, it was beautiful. It was gorgeously written. I loved it. And I want to read everything that he writes now. So definitely keeping this one, obviously five stars. <sighs> okay. So the next one is the first book in a brand new middle grade fantasy series. And this was also featured in my middle grade reading vlog. And that is Kelsey Murphy and the Academy for the Unbreakable Arts. This is by Erica Lewis. And this one just came out March 1st. So it just came out earlier, which is awesome. And I was highly anticipating this release because I do love middle grade fantasy, as you could probably tell, there's more coming up. <laughs> but as far as middle grade books go, that's my, that's my joy spot is fantasy. I just really love them so much, especially if you have a magical school. Yes, please. So this one follows our main character, Kelsey Murphy. She is an orphan living in Boston. She goes to a museum on a field trip and uh, is essentially kidnapped and accidentally transported to a magical world that she did not know existed. And she quickly discovers that she's actually meant to be there. She uh, is really kind of navigating this all on her own because she accidentally went there. Like there's, there's nobody to kind of guide her through anything. She ends up realizing that there is an academy there and that in order to get into this academy, you have to pass some trials. Yes. <laughs> so this has my name written all over it, right? So she does that and she ends up getting in. Um, she makes some companions along the way. She's very wary of everything though still because she did not know any of the stuff existed. However, she feels very much at home as, as well. So there's like, there's definitely a pull there as far as she feels like she belongs there. So that's cool. But she doesn't know why and she doesn't have parents to or family to speak of. Um, so she's kind of learning this all as she goes. So she gets into this academy and you see her learning about all the things and learning how to do magic and realizes she has magical powers. She realizes what those are and how to use them and all this stuff. Now for this one, the unique thing about this is that Kelsey has a tendency towards the dark side of magic. And that's different definitely than I think other books because I think other books are more on the good side and the heroes and all that, but she has kind of, she feels a draw towards the dark side and you kind of see that happening and you see her struggle with that because she doesn't want that. But it's like almost an instinct for her. So that was really a cool aspect about this one. So you really see her struggle with that. Um, I really, really loved this. <laughs> I did give it four stars. I didn't give it a five because it wasn't completely new or original. Definitely a little bit of a formula, but it was very entertaining. The magic system was really cool. Um, the way that they get around is really cool. And I liked her struggling 
with her tendencies and um, how to control that. I liked the characters in here a lot, the people that she was teamed up with. And yeah, like it was a good time. I really, really liked it. I will definitely pick up the second book. I'm going to keep this for my shelves. Like this is a solid start to a middle grade fantasy series and I'm totally here for it. Hey, the next one that I read is Maribel and the Book of Fate. And this is by Tracy Barrett. This is another one that I listened to on audio. It was a very short audio book, so I just listened to it. And it was narrated by Cassandra Morris, who did a great job. And this one follows our young girl, Maribel. She has a twin brother. They are the prince and princess of this kingdom. And her brother is kind of known as the chosen one. Um, there's like prophecies about him. Like he's going to, he's going to be the king. He's the heir. He's, he's the answer to everything. Right. And everyone believes this. And that's because it's written in something called the book of fate that this kingdom lives their lives by. If there's ever questions about what's happening or what should happen, they go to the book of fate to get those questions answered. And so her twin brother, Marco is the answer for everything, basically. However, Marco goes missing one day. He is kidnapped and nobody knows where he is or who has him. And uh, so everyone starts panicking, you know, like they think everything is doomed and the kingdom's going to fall and all this stuff just because he's gone. So Maribel takes it upon herself and she teams up with her handmaiden and a very, very sassy unicorn. And they go off to find her brother and they are the only ones who know where he could be. Um, I won't say why, but there's a reason. And so you follow them on this adventure and they're going through the kingdom and they're in dangerous places and they come across very dangerous beings like trolls and goblins and giants and very dangerous things that could, you know, prevent them from <laughs> continuing on. And so you see them go through that and try to get her brother back. So uh, I, I gave this one three stars. Um, I think it was good. I think for the age range, this is more like an eight to 12 for sure. So a little bit more on the younger side. I think for the age range, this was really good and um, could be very entertaining for kids for sure. And um, yeah, it just wasn't for me personally, it wasn't super memorable. Like I probably won't remember this a year from now, <laughs> exactly what happened. I will remember the unicorn. He was fabulous. He was very sassy. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, it was good. It was good. Um, I don't think this is a series. As far as I know, there's not a second one, um, like a follow-up to this book or anything. So I believe this is a standalone, uh, but yeah. So um, I'm giving this to my daughter, Layla. I asked her if she was interested in it. She read the synopsis and said, yes. So I'm gonna hand this over to her. I think she will really like it, um, but yeah, it was cute. Okay, the next one that I read was the group book for middle grade March, and that is Pony by R.J. Palacio. And I had purchased this book, I think late last year, because I really wanted to read it. This is by the same author who wrote Wonder, which I absolutely loved. And so I definitely wanted to read another book by her. So I was really excited when this one came out, and I had heard really, really good things. Okay, uh, so... <laughs> This one, I've kind of been calling this a historical Western paranormal. Like that's, that's really the best way I can describe it. It is historical. Uh, it's set in the 1800s and it is set like in a Western type, like our young boy lives on a ranch and he's going on horseback to find his father. Like it's, it's very Western-y. It feels like you're watching like a Western movie and there is a paranormal aspect. So, you know, like that's just what it is. This is another one that I listened to on audio and it was narrated by Ian M. Hawkins, who did a great job. I thought the narration was great. And so we do follow this young boy named Silas, him and his father live on a ranch. And one night his father is confronted by a group of men who he doesn't know and um, they end up taking him. They need him for a job. He is going against his will, basically. So young Silas is very obviously upset and scared, doesn't really know what to do. He has a companion in a boy named Mittenwool, and Mittenwool is a ghost. 
nobody can see him but Silas. Silas can see him. He can hear him. He feels real to him. But he knows that Mitten Wool is not alive either. So, um, but Mitten Wool always helps him. He will uh, give him information about things that are going on. Um, and just he's a great companion for Silas. So Silas uh, is very scared. He doesn't know what to do. He wants to go find his father. And so he tries to start planning to set out to go do that. However, he's a young boy and there's like, you know, he doesn't know where he's going. Um, and then he sees this pony start walking up. And it's a pony that was with the people who took his father. So he maybe has an idea that possibly this horse knows the way. Maybe this horse knows exactly where they went and maybe he can ride him um, and the horse can take him back. But he quickly learns that's not the case. <laughs> so, um, but he, he sees this pony as a sign that he needs to go. He needs to go find his father. And so he takes off on this pony and Mitten Wool is with them and they go and try to find where his father went and try to bring him back home. Uh, so that's all I'm going to say. There's definitely a lot of adventure in here. There were parts in here where I was scared. <laughs> like, I like there was definitely very, very dangerous situations that I was like, oh my goodness, what what is going to happen? Uh, and yeah, I like it was really, really good, you guys. It was really, really good. There were there were just like definitely situations where I just felt, I felt tense, you know, like listening to it and just like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? Um, but yeah, but it was great. It was great. I don't want to say too much because I don't want to ruin it. It's not a super long book either. So like that is a very vague description of what the book is about. But yeah, it was, um, it was fantastic. And I gave it five stars. So I recommend I'm keeping it, loved it. If it sounds like something you'd be mildly interested in, give it a read. The next one I read was another one for my series reading vlog. So I read the first book in the Conjurer series. This is called Rise of the Shadow. It's by Brian Anderson. And this is a um, younger, like more 8 to 12 age range. This one follows a brother and sister. They are living with their uncle because their parents are missing. And they've been missing for years, <laughs> like years. And so they're living with their uncle. And then one night, something happens at the house that makes them realize that, again, magic is real. Magic is a thing. There's a whole magical world that we weren't aware of. And somehow we're a part of it. So all that type of thing. They get sent down a portal to this magical world because their house is attacked and their uncle is trying to save their lives. So he sends them there. So they are in this magical place. They do have a guide that is sent with them and they are trying to figure out where they need to go in order to be safe. All the while wondering how this ties into them and how they're involved in this and exactly what's going on. Uh, so yeah, that's all I'm really going to say because again, another super, super short. And this one also has like full page, um, some full page illustrations in here and a lot of things going on. Um, and the author does the illustrations, which is really cool. I will say this was a very quick read um, because it is, you know, again, short and it's for a, a younger audience. Um, but it was a little forgettable. Like I don't, I remember it right now because I only read it a couple days ago, but I think like a couple months from now, I'm not going to remember a whole lot about it, to be honest. And it wasn't, it didn't keep me engaged enough that I want to keep going and read the other two books in the series because book number three just came out. So like, I'm not there at all. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. I think kids who like portal fantasies would probably really like this at least give it a try and see what they think there is a little also a little bit of a creep factor in here like you know some of the things that were chasing them were like skeleton heads and you know things like that like skulls and stuff but a little bit of a creepy factor as well I don't know it was fine it was fine um I gave it three stars um I'm not personally going to keep it for my shelves I did let my daughter Layla read the synopsis and she was like I think I'm okay so we're we're gonna um pass this one on as well Okay, and the last two books that I read for the month are actually two
two middle grade graphic novels. So the first one is called When Stars Are Scattered, and this is by Victoria Jameson and Omar Mohammed. This is actually a, okay, it's hard to describe this. It's a fictionalized nonfiction. So it's, it's technically categorized as fiction, and that's where it is in the library, but it's based on a true story. It's based on Omar's true story. So there's that. Um, but I think there was enough in here that they had to take some liberties with because of the age of the children that are in here and Omar's own memories could not necessarily be 100% accurate because of his age. So um, it's not technically nonfiction, but it is based on his true story. So I hope that makes sense. It was kind of interesting trying to figure out, figure all that out. But this follows Omar and his brother Hassan. They are Somalian refugees and it follows their story living in a refugee camp in Kenya. And this is a true story <laughs> based on um, their experiences there. So you see them as young boys. They are living in Somalia with their parents. They the This is at the time where Somalia was um, attacked and Basically, it was a big civil war happening, and their father was killed at their house, and so their mother took them and ran. Um, the boys ended up by themselves. <laughs> they got separated from their mother, and um, they don't know what ever happened. They, they didn't know what happened to her, so they were sent. They kind of just followed a big flock of people who were escaping and they ended up in a Kenyan refugee camp and they were assigned a guardian because they were young and you see them growing up and it it goes through them basically growing up at this refugee camp because that's what happened. So this is also a situation where you could see people who were getting relocated to other countries like the US, Canada, other places. Um, and you had to qualify for that with the UN and they had to go through interviews and tell their stories and do all these things. And not everyone was chosen, <sighs> man. <laughs> so, um, it was heartbreaking to see all the struggle. You, um, follow Omar as he is going to school and trying to qualify <laughs> for certain things and not all the kids qualified. You know, you had to take a test in order to get into the middle school and not everyone did. And so what happens to them? You know, they struggle to make it. Uh, you see them struggle to make money in order to like feed themselves um, a little bit more than what type, like the type of rations they were getting, which was <sighs> not enough. Um, and you, you just see their struggles. Um, Omar's brother also had a medical condition that was giving him seizures and the doctors couldn't really help that much. And so that was a little bit scary as well. But you see Omar like really wanting to be there for his brother, but also wanting to go to school and take, you know, try to build a future for them if he can. So you see his struggle with that definitely big time. And yeah, so that's that's what I'm that's what I'm gonna say. But um, I love that it was in graphic novel form. I thought it was really impactful, especially for you know middle school kids. And the artwork in here is really great as well, as you can see. Um, this is done by the same uh, person who did Roller Girl, that graphic novel. So um, that's cool. So if you liked Roller Girl or saw that, like it's gonna have the same type of like artwork and stuff like that. But um, it was fantastic. It really was. I gave this five stars. I absolutely loved it. I was just feeling so much for everybody in here and just knowing that it all really happened was just like so heartbreaking. Um, but then one thing that was really cool when I was reading the afterward is where Omar ended up. We lived in the same city for a couple of years. So that was really cool. <laughs> I was like, oh, we lived there at the same time. So that was really neat. Um, so that was just kind of like a really cool thing at the end there. But uh, yeah, so I loved it. I loved it, loved it. It was great. This is a library book, so I will be taking it back to the library. But if you do like graphic novels, this is a fantastic one. A huge thanks to Krista for telling me to read it. Okay, and the last one is one that I put on hold at the library because I had heard Gloria talk about this one. Um, and she kind of compared this one to Sweep a little bit in A Girl Finding... Um, a partnership with a kind of like a 
fantasy companion, if you will. So I was like, ooh, so I'll try that. And it was a graphic novel, so why not? And that is Lightfall, The Girl and the Galdurian. This is by Tim Probert. And this is the first one. I think there is at least a second one. I don't know if there's any more after that. But um, this follows a young girl whose grandfather is... He's not missing, but he has gone off on his own without her knowing about it. And he's up there in age, tends to forget a lot of things. So she's very worried about him. She's worried that he's going to go out and just get lost, even though he says he's on a mission. So she sets out to go find him and to make sure that he's okay and to bring him back. <laughs> and she just wants him to be safe and she doesn't feel like he is. She ends up meeting this Galdurian which is said to be kind of like an ancient being, if you will. Like there's not a lot of them left. And they set out together to go find her grandfather because he is also looking for her grandfather for a certain reason. So um, they team up together and they go to try to find him. And you see where they end up and some things that they encounter, some dangerous people, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I liked this one. I, I ended up giving it four stars. Um, the artwork in here is stunning. I will say that. Let me find a really good one. Um, the artwork is really, really good. And there are also a lot of just full page illustrations or a whole lot of different panels all together that are just illustrations, but still telling the story. So I read this in one sitting. Um, so here's one that's kind of like that. So there's multiple panels, but it's telling, it's like moving the story forward. Um, so it was really easy for me to just flip through and read it. <laughs> uh, again, I did it one sitting. So it was just something that was very easy to do. I'm trying to find, I remember specifically a really good um, full page. Here we go. Like so pretty, right? Like really, really bright, vibrant colors. Um, there's another one like that towards the end that I'll show you, but the artwork was great. Um, the story itself is fine. I don't think it was like anything completely mind blowing by any means. Um, I'd be willing to pick up the second one and continue on. Uh, but not like I'm not rushing to at the same time. So I don't know. I don't know what that says. Um, but I did give it four stars. Um, I thought it was good. I think um, if you like fantasy graphic novels that you would like this one. Okay, this is what I was looking for. Like how pretty is that? Isn't that gorgeous? Oh my goodness. Like I could just sit here and look at this artwork all day. So I hope that made sense. <laughs> I don't feel like I described that very well. Um, but definitely like fantasy adventure. It was good. Um, I'll take it back to the library. I don't feel like I need to own a copy of it, but it was worth the read. Okay, 12 books. Six I read physically, six I listened to on audio. Whew, that was a lot. <laughs> yeah, like I said, the second half of March just completely blew up for me, which I'm not mad about. I'm not mad about it. I'm very happy with everything that I read, and I read a lot of middle grade, which is what I wanted to do. And snuck in a couple of adult ones there as well. So that is what I read. Let me know down below if you have read any of these. Are you planning to pick any of them up? Did you do middle grade March? If you did, what was your favorite read? I want to know that as well. And I will, again, leave my Pango books down below if you guys are interested in that at all. No pressure. Ignore it if you want to, but it's there for you if you want to look at it. And I will also leave any booktubers I mentioned linked down below as well, because I mentioned quite a few here. So, all right. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know your thoughts and I will see you guys again soon. Bye.